Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are actually continuing with the development of gastrointestinal system and in this session I am planning to talk about the development of duodenum. Duodenum as you all know it is derived, a part of it is derived from the foregut and a part of it is derived from the midgut. So which part is derived from the foregut and which part is derived from the midgut? We know that duodenum is in the form of a C and you have the major duodenal papillae which is opening into the second part of duodenum, isn't it? So there are many four parts for the duodenum. So the major duodenal papillae which is a common entry point for the common bile duct as well as the pancreatic duct, that is the major duodenal papillae. So the part above the major duodenal papillae is derived from the foregut and the part below the major duodenal papillae is derived from the midgut. So duodenum is derived from two uh, regions of the primitive gut, foregut as well as from the midgut. So previous, so in the beginning we know that the primitive gut tube will be, is, uh, will be in the form of a straight tube, isn't it? So what happens at the duodenal region, the stomach region we have already discussed that it is having a fusiform dilatation. In the duodenal region what happens is this tube which was straight will have a convexity anteriorly and it will form a loop anteriorly. Okay, so previously it was just straight tube, now it will just bend anteriorly so that there is a loop formed with a convexity facing anteriorly and likewise what happens there will be a concavity posteriorly. So you just imagine the C like this. Okay, previously it was a straight tube, now it bends anteriorly so that there is a convexity facing anteriorly and a concavity facing posteriorly. So uh, now what happens further? So you know that these uh, gut tubes are suspended by the ventral as well as dorsal mesenteries, isn't it? So there is a ventral mesogastrium when we discussed about the stomach. So a part of it is also extending onto the duodenum and that, that ventral mesogastrium is actually derived from the septum transversum. So that will be attached to the proximal portion of the duodenum. The remaining part of the duodenum is not having any peritoneal suspension. So this is the only uh, mesogastrium which is suspending the duodenal loop from the anterior abdominal wall. But when you think about the posterior portion, so this is actually after rotation. Okay, so first we will discuss about the 90 degree rotation what is happening for the duodenum. So previously it was C shaped with the ventral aspect facing anteriorly and the dorsal aspect uh, facing posteriorly. Okay, the convexity will be facing anteriorly. Now what happens is there is uh, the midgut loop, is it? And the midgut loop, I will be talking about the midgut loop, the physiological herniation and the rotation and all. So for the time being, you just imagine that there is a midgut loop from which you have the remaining part of the small intestines and um, the hindgut from where you have the large intestine, all these are developing, right? So for previously what happens is all these tubes are uh, lying outside the abdominal cavity in the form of physiological hernia. What is the reason for that? Because you have the liver which is, uh, which is rapidly developing and the abdominal cavity of the fetus is very small. So it's not able to accommodate the uh, larger larger loops within the abdominal cavity since it has to accommodate the liver. So for the time being what happens is the loops will actually lie outside the abdominal cavity in the form of physiological hernia. Okay, so now our duodenum can stand like this with uh, along the vertical axis with the convexity facing anteriorly. But what happens later with the development of the abdominal cavity, this loop of uh, intestine which was lying outside by the process of physiological hernia will come back to occupy its final position. So what happens, you can just imagine if I am standing in this big room alone, I can just stand as I like. But if uh, some people starts entering into it and if it is crowded, I will have to adjust so that I am safe and secure, right? So likewise, what happens to our duodenum is in the beginning, uh, that is during the physiological hernia where the loop of intestine is lying outside the abdominal cavity, this uh, loop of duodenum with the C shape, the convexity anteriorly and the concavity posteriorly is lying in the midline along the vertical axis. 
but when the loop starts entering into the abdominal cavity now there is no space for the duodenum to stand erect so it will just try to occupy a space somewhere posteriorly safe and secure so this happens by a process of rotation and this rotation happens at 90 degree okay so that is the reason why this loop is now so the this loop was lying like this now it will just rotate to the right okay along 90 degree axis so what happens now the anterior or the ventral portion the convexity will be lying on the right aspect and the dorsal concavity will be lying on the left aspect this is our final position of the duodenum so the dorsal meso uh, mesentery which was actually suspending the duodenum from the dorsal aspect will be now lying on the left side that point also you have to remember now what happens is actually the entire process of uh, development of duodenum goes through three main process one is rotation that is the 90 degree rotation which we have just seen then the next one is fixation and the third one is axial rotation these are the three uh, important aspects which you have to write when you are asked to write a short note on duodenum these three words should come and these diagrams should be there in order to get a better mark so uh, first thing is rotation we have mentioned about the reason for rotation the next thing is fixation so what do you mean by fixation so this is our uh, first position of the duodenum and this will undergo a 90 degree rotation and this is our dorsal mesentery which is uh, suspending the duodenum in the beginning so when it comes or when it rotates by 90 degree it is more uh, coming to the posterior abdominal wall this is actually the posterior abdominal wall okay so this loop is actually now more closer to the posterior abdominal wall and this is our dorsal masonry we have just mentioned it now the dorsal masonry will be lying to the left of the duodenum now another process happens that is known as cygosis so by the process of cygosis what happens is the posterior this is the parietal layer parietal layer of peritoneum means the peritoneum which is lining the body wall so this is the posterior abdominal wall and so the lining of uh, peritoneum which is closer to the posterior abdominal wall you call it as parietal peritoneum so the parietal peritoneum and a portion of the uh, peritoneum suspending the duodenum will be actually adhered to each other and they will just fuse and disappear that process is known as cygosis so which all layers are disappearing this parietal peritoneum this layer also disappears by a process known as psychosis so when we draw the next diagram we know that it is just this portion which is left isn't it that is the reason why here i have been drawn any uh, layer of peritoneum so in the beginning so this is actually applicable to the part of duodenum except the proximal 2.5 centimeters because the proximal 2.5 centimeters we have the mesentery or the mesogastrium of the stomach extending onto the duodenum so this process is not happening to the proximal 2.5 uh, centimeters of the duodenum and that is actually not retroperitoneal and that is also movable whenever a part of gut is suspended by mesentery that part will be movable and whenever a part of gut is not suspended completely that part will be called retroperitoneal or it will be immovable so this is our final position of the duodenum and now what happens so previously it was suspended by the mesogastrium or the mesentery and finally what happens is the it by a process known as cygosis the two layers got fused and disappeared now the duodenum will be actually covered only on one aspect and the posterior aspect will be more closer to the posterior abdominal wall and this is what we call as retroperitoneal retroperitoneal means now it is behind the peritoneum previously it was suspended or all the regions of the all the parts of the duodenum was actually having a relation of peritoneum i won't say that it will it is inside the peritoneal cavity i have mentioned that concept in previous uh, sessions please have a look at it this time what happens is 
Previously, you had a relation of peritoneum all around the duodenum, but after a process known as zygosis, only a portion of it is having a relation of peritoneum and a po portion is free of peritoneal relation and that is why we call it as retroperitoneal or behind the peritoneum. So, that is what is happening to the uh, peritoneal relation of the duodenum. So, at this point, uh, I would like to add uh, one more aspect what is uh, important in the development of duodenum that is axial rotation which is happening to the second part. It is not there for the other parts. So, why only axial rotation for the second part of duodenum? So, this is the second part, right? So, this is a this, uh, part from which you have the uh, dorsal pancreatic bud, you have the ventral pancreatic bud, you have the uh, liver bud, hepatic bud, all these are developing from the second part of duodenum. Uh, you know that uh, at the junction of foregut and midgut. Please uh, see the session on the development of liver and hepatic biliary apparatus. You will have a clear idea. So, uh, by the process of axial rotation, which is happening only in the second part, our uh, main agenda is uh, this part should come and lie on the left side, right? So, if it is uh, the entire duodenum is rotating to, uh, to the left side again, then uh, the pancreatic bud also will rotate, the dorsal pancreatic bud also will rotate. So, uh, everything will be a mess, right? So, by axial rotation what happens is, you imagine this as a tube. You just imagine this as a second part of duodenum. Here you have the dorsal pancreatic bud, here you have the ventral pancreatic bud, okay. So previously the dorsal pancreatic bud was on the posterior aspect and ventral anteriorly. By the 90 degree rotation of the duodenum, we have the dorsal pancreatic bud lying on the left and the ventral pancreatic bud lying on the right side. Now our aim is to bring the ventral pancreatic bud over the posterior aspect so that it comes and lie uh, nearer to the dorsal pancreatic bud. So, this should happen without moving the dorsal pancreatic bud. So, how can that happen? If this rotates, the dorsal also will come anteriorly and the ventral will go posterior. Likewise, it, they won't be able to meet each other. So, what happens? That is by a process of differential growth of the second part of duodenum. Just imagine a balloon, uh, you are marking one point there and if you imagine that a part of the balloon is enlarging without affecting a part of it, okay, it is not uniformly enlarging. So what happens, uh, you just imagine a point here, you just imagine a point here, these are our dorsal pancreatic bud and this is our ventral pancreatic bud, okay. This is the second part of duodenum. Now, the differential growth occurs so that this will go on expanding without affecting this portion. Okay, you just imagine that this part, the cells are actually proliferating, proliferating, proliferating. So, what happens? This point will be pushed towards the posterior aspect and finally it will come and lie anti uh, nearer to the dorsal pancreatic bud. This portion will remain, so this portion will remain there and this, as the cells start proliferating, this part will enlarge. So, the point which was here, this will enlarge and it will push that point alone to, uh, to a point closer to the dorsal pancreatic bud. So, that process is known as differential growth of the second part of duodenum. You have to, it's a bit uh, confusing statement, uh, you have to imagine it. Okay, so you just imagine a tube, you just imagine a part of it enlarging by a differential growth so that it will push that point more closer to the uh, dorsal pancreatic bud. That process is known as differential growth of second part of duodenum and that happens uh, for the change in position or for the final development of the pancreas. So, these are the three important steps which happen or which you have to say when you are asked about the development of duodenum. The first one is rotation, 90 degree rotation uh, uh, to the right. Then you have the fixation by which uh, you have the layers fused to the posterior abdominal wall and the third one is axial rotation whereby differential growth of duodenum happens in the second part and uh, as a result the dorsal and ventral pancreatic bud will uh, get fused to form the future pancreas. Now around 8th week till now we are talking about the gut with the lumen. 
Around 8th week what happens is due to the development of the cells inside the lining cells as they proliferate they will actually fill the tube and the tube will get obliterated. That is the lumen will get obliterated by around 8th week and uh, by around 3rd month the tube will again get recanalized so that you get your adult duodenum, patent duodenum. Okay, so 8th week the lumen gets obliterated by the proliferation of the lining cells and by 3rd month it will again get recanalized to the primitive position. So sometimes what happens is the recanalization won't happen. So if this recanalization is not happening, uh, what happens is there will be atresia for the duodenum. The lumen won't be patent. That, is, that condition is known as duodenal atresia. So this duodenal atresia can also happen due to uh, some vascular insult, so lack of blood supply to that region or it can also happen due to annular pancreas. Please see the development of pancreas to know about the annular pancreas. And this sign is actually seen as double bubble sign in USD. Just imagine, uh, so usually the duodenal atresia happens below this major duodenal papilla, anywhere here, below the major opening of major duodenal papilla, you have the duodenal atresia, that segment is below the major duodenal papilla. So if you happen to get an atresia here, the, here the lumen is actually obli uh, obliterated. So what happens, there will be a dilatation proximally isn't it? The region above will dilate because as the food comes it won't be able to leave the duodenum so this portion will be dilated. So when you do a USG what happens is the pyloric sphincter region will be constricted. Above that you have the stomach which is already dilated and due to the presence of duodenal atresia this region also will be dilated. Okay so there are two dilatations. Uh, and you have the pyloric sphincter and the duodenal atrial regions which are constricted. So this sign is known as double bubble sign. You can see two bubbles when you see when you uh, do the UST. Uh, so that is actually suggestive of duodenal atresia, double bubble sign. Now talking about uh, the blood supply of the duodenum, the definitive duodenum, we have two major vessels, the superior and inferior pancreatico duodenal vessels. We know that superior pancreatico duodenal artery is a finer branch of celiac artery and the inferior pancreatico duodenal is a finer branch of superior mesenteric artery. And again uh, we have mentioned that uh, celiac artery is the artery of foregut and superior mesenteric artery is the artery of midgut. So uh, since duodenum is derived from foregut and midgut we have arterial supply coming from foregut and uh, artery as well as from the midgut artery. So that's about uh, the development of duodenum in a nutshell. Hope you have understood. Please leave your comments. Uh, those who haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Thank you. Thanks for watching.